we'll rush right into it this morning, getting a late start. Somebody overslept this morning. I'm not telling you who it was, but anyway. I'm sorry. I'll set my alarm next time. Go right ahead, Mr. Kirby, and introduce our nice guest. All right. Well, from the Heritage in Flight uh, Museum, we have Curtis Fox, who has been with us not too long ago, and Stacy Wachtel, who is the new, the new board president. I am. Is that correct? So, yes. So uh, as of earlier this month, I believe. Yes. So both of you, thanks for being with us, and welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Curtis said hi at Bar for us. And Mrs. Gossett said that uh, the book club she attended recently, that Mr. Fox gave a little presentation on heritage and why, and she said that was really, really very interesting. So, Curtis, wear your, wear your to-do hat, my friend. Yeah. Oh, I'm just glad to do it. Yeah, so let's start, let's start right, Mrs. Wachtel. Uh, you're the new gal on the block, uh, new president. Yes, Have I am. Have we ever had a uh, 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 lady officer before in Heritage in Flight? I am the first. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. showed up. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Well, uh, your husband Tom has been long active in Heritage in Flight, so let's go back a little bit and pick up from the beginning. Uh, how long has Heritage in Flight been in existence? Over 40 years. Think of that. Now, let's define what Heritage in Flight is because we have a couple of listeners out there that don't know we even have an airport out there. I have heard that. Uh, basically, it's a great museum. It, it, uh, it's not only aviation, but it's also a lot of history and um, military. We have exhibits that start at World War I to the present, and the majority of the uh, items that are in our museum are donated from people from the local area, past members, past volunteers. And, and when people go through the museum, especially people from the Lincoln area in Atlanta, they'll probably find a relative in there that's donated and may not be aware of um, the people they already knew one way or the other. That, that impressed me. I moved here in 2002 from St. Louis and got involved early on the outside more. You know, I did a few quilt blo uh, raffles for when the balloon fest was on the property um, back in the days of when we had a chamber of commerce and um, yeah, that and that was a lot of fun because I made quilts for either the hot air balloon people or even the military. I've got that in the works for this year for uh -huh. one of our projects. I just have to decide what direction I'm going to go on a quilt and I'll have that probably by fall and we'll do that with a raffle. Now I'm committed so everybody take a note. <laughs> Well, I'd like to, uh, listeners, both of the listeners out there this morning to know that my uniform's on display out there, uh, replete with this good conduct medal. <laughs> Did you get that at a garage sale? Or, yes. uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be about That's right. Good. No, seriously, um, um, there's a lot of interesting things out there. There is. People uh, handed down, down through the ages, and, and uh, when you think, uh, going back to World War I, that is really a long time. Yeah, it's fun when you have a school tour, um, especially the kids in the elementary school or maybe junior, um, junior high or beyond. Especially the younger kids, they they freak out a little bit and they love the, the old-fashioned radio, the t uh, turntable, and um, the typewriter from World War One. They know it dings if you push that. <laughs> Carriage return. Thank yeah. you. The carriage return. I, I came in at select, or, select or oh, whatever, okay. but now iPad. But um, it's adorable because they have the, those are their three tops on the uh, that I witnessed when I helped with the tour a few years ago. But um, so I'm aware of the fact that the uh, uh, um, goodness gracious, I got up too late. <laughs> the thought process. Is Maybe you stayed up too uh, late. <laughs> We've had the volunteers come in there and do uh, work for our uh, our entrances. We have uh, a handicapped entrances to that building, and uh, uh, so uh, going to me ask uh, Mr. Fox to pick up the history on uh, heritage in flight and, and uh, maybe go from there. Okay, got all sorts of things to mm -hmm. to share with us. We were talking about their. You know, several businesses located out there. You were telling me at the museum, at the in addition to the museum out at the Logan County Airport, that maybe folks aren't aware of. Yeah, and I wanted to actually touch on something Bill said initially about the history of uh, aviation in Logan County. I don't think that a lot of people know about that. Um, the current airport, the Logan County Airport, is actually not the first. Uh, community airport in Lincoln. The first one was out on the west side of town and it was uh, was where Walmart is now actually. Uh, uh, a farmer by the name of Henry Bach uh, 
although not a pilot, was really committed, interested in aviation, and he gave some of his land there to create an airport. And uh, it had two runways, north, south, east, west, they were grass runways. And it was a gathering point for the, I guess you would call it the pioneers of aviation in Lincoln and Logan County. Um, uh, then, in 1946, uh, some people in Lincoln decided that we needed a more modern airport, uh, one with a hard surface runway. And so uh, an airport authority was created by some members of the community. The airport authority is a taxing district. Um, uh, and uh, gathered enough money to purchase the land where the airport is currently located, the Logan County Airport, uh, on the northeast side of Lincoln. Uh, the unfortunate thing is uh, the taxing district was only uh, instituted for one year, just enough money to build the airport and then it sunsetted. And the airport uh, went on for years with no local tax money. That's currently the state also of the airport. The only money the Logan County Airport gets locally is from the crops growing on, grown on the airport, uh, hangar rent, fuel sales, um, and uh, that's it. Uh, so it's been a struggle over the years to keep the airport up to date uh, with new uh, facilities um, uh, and uh, we use the, the money we get locally uh, from airport services to match federal and state money to, um, to uh, increase the usefulness of the airport. So the unfortunate part about the Logan County Airport now is that it's landlocked and what we have is what we're going to continue to have into the future. The runway needs to be lengthened uh, to accommodate uh, more up-to-date aircraft, uh, but uh, can't be done. Uh, Curtis, would you say that uh, the presence of the airport is, is really an economic factor in our, in our community? Well, I would say that the Illinois Division of Aeronautics does a survey every few years of all of the public airports in Illinois. It's an economic uh, development study to see what the airports contribute to their local communities. And Lincoln is in that book, or I should say Logan County Airport, is in that study. I think it's done every five years. I haven't seen it recently since I've been away from uh, engineering, but uh, the last time I saw it, uh, they estimated that the Logan County Airport contributed at least half a million dollars uh, annually to the, um, to the um, community. Uh, so I think that's fairly significant. A lot of people say, well, that airport is just for people with their toys, their airplane toys. And that's just not true. Uh, it is an economic engine for the community. Uh, all airports can be an economic uh, engine for a community. Specifically at Lincoln, we have uh, four businesses on the airport. Um, Chuck Holsworth has Holsworth Aviation, which is a um, uh, Crop dusting, the old term is crop dusting. Now they prefer to be called aerial applicators. Uh, it's a state of the art facility uh, in June, July, and the first part of August. Things are jumping down there. Uh, he has his own airplanes, he has people come from all over the country uh, to operate out of his facility there. Um, there is an aircraft broker at the airport. Uh, Seriously? Yes, a guy who sells uh, and buys airplanes. Uh, interesting business. He has a second, um, second business at the Marshall County Airport, which is on the Illinois River north of Peoria. But he chose to come to the Logan County Airport um, uh, to uh, increase the size of his business. Uh, 
We have Logan County Airframe and Engine, which is a business started by Mark Piercy. He was a mechanic at uh, Bloomington Airport. When that facility closed, he was casting about for a place to move uh, and open his own business rather than being an employee. And uh, he settled on Logan County. We had a, a shop hangar in the new administration building uh, was available, and so the airport updated it, uh, put in new floor, new ceiling, and he started his business there. Kind of a unique business. At Bloomington, they handled um, an airplane called the TBM 700, which uh, is made in France, and it's a very, very expensive, very fast turboprop, and that's his specialty. Although he work, he'll work on anybody's airplanes. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful place. Um, and our newest uh, sort of business, but I, I can't exactly call it a business, is the Illinois Valley Parachute Club. Uh, it's a parachute club that's been in business, um, been in existence, I should say, since the 1960s, uh, first in Pekin, and then they had their own um, airport, actually, near Hopedale, and then uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, they decided to uh, that Logan County Airport would be a better fit for them. Uh, and so they moved their airplane and their facilities to Lincoln with the help of the uh, Logan County Airport Committee. Uh, they were very receptive. Um, the business part of it is that we have a gentleman who's a member who does tandem skydives here in Lincoln. Uh, so if you want to go skydiving, but you don't want to go through an entire course, you can contact uh, Chad and he will hook you up to him. And we take you to 11,000 feet in our airplane and you jump out and you get a really terrific uh, free fall. Uh, you can have a video made of it. Uh, it's really cool. We've had people from all over, all over, coming to Lincoln for. Is the there day. an age limit? Uh, <laughs> yes. You would have to. <laughs> you'd have to talk to Chad about that. But uh, it's, it's. Well, the first thing I have to do is talk to my wife and her lawyer. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Someone's got a birthday coming up, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Right. I was just thinking that'd be a great birthday present. <laughs> Make sure the life insurance is uh, <laughs> up to date. Mm. Six four eight five five one zero. We might have a commercial or two to uh, justify our presence here.
announcer in captivity and his co-part, uh, Lloyd Kirby. Go right ahead, Lloyd. Yeah, so our guest today, as we mentioned before, uh, from the Heritage and Flight Museum at the Logan County Airport, we have Curtis Fox, as well as newly elected board president, Stacy Wachtel. So Stacy, as new president, I'm sure you've got some, some irons in the fire, things you're hoping to do. Um, I know we've talked before, last time Curtis was here, that the uh, Heritage, and, Heritage and Flight is a nonprofit organization, so um, certainly you've got you know, ample opportunity to do some fundraising, and I'm sure you could use donations and volunteers and all sorts of things like that. So, what uh, have you got some some wheels in motion on things you're that are coming up down the road here? Great. Um, and, jo and first, I want to say the board the board is amazing. A lot of them have been on the board for a long time, and they've definitely been more active in the museum much longer than I have. And to be a successful president without a good board that we have there and any uh, organization, they, they they steer. They've got great ideals, and they they know the ranks. They know. So, with that said, I mean I'm honored to be doing this. It's I'm learning from them every day, and I appreciate <laughs> Kurt, Kurt showing up with me because he's got it all up here. Um, June sixth, we're going to have um, a presentation from the FAA Federal Aviation Administration. It's going to be at 11 o'clock on June 6th. There's no reservations required, but anybody can show up if you are a. It's a, it's a safety seminar, and we've had it um, presented in the past before. Um, the guest speaker is Warren Smith, who is the coordinator for the uh, safety seminar, and he'll be the guest speaker that day for license, geared towards licensed pilots and student pilots throughout the central Illinois and beyond area. Typically, we receive about 50 to 75 people to show up, oh, okay. but uh, it is open if people want to come listen. So that's a great way to encourage possibly moving into aviation. And um, and that takes place at the airport? At there? the airport in the okay. big hangar that we have. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. So it should be a fun day. I'll be there. and We're going to do a raffle. It, it'll kick off sometime in April. We're getting all of the gifts. Uh, prizes set up. We know we have one for sure. It was popular last year. It was for one of those Yeti coolers, mm -hmm. and this is Yeti cooler on wheels. Wow. It'll be the first prize, and we've got some really exciting, but not tied up yet, prizes in the <laughs> pop pipeline. So that'll be good. We're going to draw that during the uh, FAA program, that we're, the safety seminar. So that will uh, we'll be running, uh, advertising the raffles, and um, we did a. Um, we had a lot of uh, interest in it last year, so we're doing it again. Uh, June 29th, or July 29th, I'm sorry, I talked to um, the uh, coordinator, Casey Lore out of Decatur. Their motorcycle group likes to stop at Heritage and Flight every year. The last Saturday in July, around 4 o'clock, they will make a... a stop at the Heritage and Flight. Open to the public. I hope a lot of locals come out and see. We've got pictures of it on uh, the event we did last year. And there was a lot of motorcycles out there. A lot of Harleys out there, you guys. A lot of motorcycles. And there were additional folks that came in cars. And I believe wasn't one of the fire uh, departments were yeah. there as well with the flag in the background. On Absolutely. The I saw, so. Absolutely. I need to contact them. I, I learned about that. this. I mean, I saw it last year, but uh, I need to make that phone call, which I will make that. But yeah, that's pretty exciting. It, um, and people like motorcycles. Yes. We get a lot of Route 66 traffic too in the meantime also. So that'll be fun. That's June um, or July. Uh, last, where did I go? I lost myself here. Ta da! Where'd it go? I lost it. The last Saturday oh, in July. Yeah. It'll be on the website. I'll be working on the website too for that. So with FAA, June, July, we've got that um, set up for the mo motorcycle ride. And I'm working on the Challenger Center. They 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 come out of the uh, Heritage um, Heartland Community mm -hmm. College. I've already spoken to them. I'll be contacting local schools in the areas. I'll start with Lincoln first and see if we can get some kids interested. And we we put the bill for it, and they get to learn a lot about space and uh, that type. It's a STEM program. Mm -hmm. I don't have that scheduled yet but I need to get the people willing or wanting to do it and uh, we're shooting for fall mm -hmm. and maybe the first quarter in um, 2014 right now it's all booked up until the end of the school year which is fine I mean but uh, that's fun they've got a great website if you go to Heartland College just mm -hmm. put in challenge and you'll see these programs and I'll be again contacting the science teachers because that's who we contact 
So I'll be getting that wrapped up hopefully in the next week or two or three. And what else? We're going to do something for the veterans on Veterans Day in the fall, and those plans are still in the infancy right now, but we will be advertising that also. So Mrs. The, Wapla, you mentioned June 6th as an important date. Can some of any of you listeners out there call us in and tell us why June 6th is a very important date in the history of this country? June 6th, call 648-5510. First one calls in, I'll take you down to old Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> Six four eight five five one. What happened on June sixth, nineteen forty four? I'll just give you another tip. I'll give you another hint. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that's, that. That's as best as good as I'm going to do. <laughs> uh, let's go back to Mr. Fox just a minute. His, his avocation, uh, <coughs> aviation, and uh, as I indicated before, Mrs. Cox said he. Did, Mrs. Cox said she did a wonderful job with her her book club, uh, telling you about the heritage of our airport and heritage in flight. Uh, Curtis is a private pilot, and uh, how long have you had that license, sir? Uh, since I was in high school. Think of that. All right, so you have a little experience. That was, you know, like 10 years ago. <laughs> a couple years ago, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Curtis is also an, a flight instructor, and for X amount of dollars, you can go out there and uh, learn to fly an airplane. And I can't think of anybody better that I want me to teach flying an airplane than somebody who's is, is, Concentrated and mm -hmm. is accomplished. Yeah, uh, knowledgeable. Mr. Fox mm -hmm. is knowledgeable about what's, what's going on. So, what would be the first routine if I were uh, a new uh, uh, no, novitiate <laughs> wanted to learn to fly? What would what would be the first thing you and I would do, sir? Well, I would have to explain to you uh, what the steps a person would have to go through to get. Uh, a private pilot a certificate. That's the what you might call the entry level uh, certificate. There is one before that, a student pilot certificate, but that's very restrictive. Uh, so you're working as a student pilot toward becoming a private pilot, which allows you to fly an airplane by yourself anywhere in the United States uh, with any number of passengers in the airplane. So we would talk about the rules the FAA has set up about uh, gaining uh, your certificate. We might go look at the airplane and explain the parts of the airplane. Uh, those, those are the initial steps that a person would, uh, would be introduced to. Uh, Mr. Wachtel is a, has a private pilot's license and has for some time. And uh, uh, as Tom also, does he have an instructor's license? Pardon me? Does Tom have an instructor's license as well as his own private pilot license? Like, does he do that? Mm -hmm. He he uh, He's not an instructor at this point. He started to do it, but it got a little the training time. He was still working at the time. Uh, that's just a specialized, uh, that's a very specialized business to it teach is. a man how to fly, or a lady how to fly an airplane. When he came out of Vietnam, he learned to be a private pilot. He's got like four different, he's got... Uh, single engine, double engine, two in, uh, what do you call it? Multi engine. Thank you, multi engine. Oh, I obviously don't fly. Um, uh, he went to Florida in 2000 to uh, get what a what you, seaplane. Thank you. See, I obviously I'm not, but anyway, yeah, that and um, commercial license. But the commercial license he doesn't use. It's not like you're going to be on TWA or anything. But he, he likes to get licenses, but he's very well qualified. IFR. Uh, training and license. We used to fly up to Wisconsin, and I close my eyes when we go through the clouds. So, but he got <laughs> us there fine, so we're good. <laughs> Curtis, have you been up to Oshkosh? I have been to Oshkosh a long time an ago. That's quite an experience. That's quite an yeah, experience. In fact, I went to Rockford, which was the predecessor of uh, of Oshkosh, and saw the uh, big air show there, and then. Flew into Oshkosh a couple of times with friends uh, for the day uh, to see all the displays there. It's a pretty spectacular event. And speaking of displays, of course, we're talking about the Heritage and Flight Museum. There are numerous displays at the museum which tie to aviation, to the military. But in addition to those displays, as you were telling us off air, there's also a lot of times a name of, of someone as uh, sort of affiliated with those particular displays. Can you kind of take us around the museum and what's there and so what folks as, might learn? Yeah, thanks for asking. Uh, 
we, you know, the museum is filled with objects, but behind all of those objects is a person who either donated them to the museum or uh, had something to do with them, uh, had something to do with aviation in central Illinois. Uh, as you come in, you might see a display about the life of uh, Red Irwin, who was a <laughs> resident of Beeson, Illinois, back in the uh, <coughs> Wild West days of aviation. Uh, he, he, gave was, me, he gave me my first airplane ride. Is that my right? My dad was oh, a fan of his, in his open cockpit biplane. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. I flew in one. It was wonderful. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I was about... Uh, I was probably about 10 at the time, so I yeah. did a lot of looking. I was really fixated on the pedals and how they were moving, and he was sitting behind me, and I didn't know who was oh. moving the pedals. But, uh, yeah, that was that was my first airplane ride. Oh, fantastic. So I'll have wow. to come see that. Anyway, well, we have a photograph of him standing in front of uh, an airplane in the late 1920s when he began his journey through aviation. And it's a World War I training airplane, and that was his first airplane. He and some friends would buy barnstorm around the country giving rides uh, to people, land in a pasture, uh, take people for their first airplane ride, do some aerobatics uh, to the oohs and ahs of the people watching. Uh, at some point he got hooked up with uh, Texaco uh, Corporation, which was a refiner. Uh, they had gas stations. He flew all over the United States for them. He flew down to South America uh, for Texaco. Uh, but the unique part of his journey through aviation is that in the display case you will see um, a jet. And in the early 1960s, um, that was a transition period for business aviation. The businesses had been using old airport airplanes to travel around in, and now uh, they were moving to more modern aircraft, specific, specifically designed for uh, them, for uh, business aviation, and jets came into being. And they, Texaco appointed Mr. Irwin as their chief pilot. And so in one photo you see him standing in front of this old wire and fabric airplane, that open cockpit biplane, and in the last one you see him in a uniform as the chief pilot uh, for uh, Texaco Oil flying a jet, the latest, uh, the latest development in aviation. So th that was very cool. Texaco, the airplane that you refer to, Texaco was so uh, enamored of Red Irwin that they bought a Stearman and had it completely restored to his specifications. It was a one-of-a-kind wow. airplane, and they gave it to him. And uh, so that was really cool. Um, one of the other displays you might see is uh, a tribute to Lindy Fancher, who was a Lincoln resident. Uh, a high school student did her history presentation on Lindy's life in the military. Um, he was a, a member of the Army during World War II. He went to South America to blow up German uh, transmission uh, stations that they used to communicate with their uh, submarines, which was just mind-boggling what he did. He was in the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, he uh, was awarded something very unusual. He was a, just an enlisted man, a sergeant, and he was um, uh, given a battlefield promotion to an officer. Very rare, very rare. And then later in his life, the French government um, gave him a, a really significant award uh, for his uh, efforts on behalf of France during World War II. So there is a display uh, about Lindy's life there. Quite a guy, really quite a guy. Uh, we have a display that was donated by Billy Chambers, who was a pilot during World War II. 
after the war, he became a professor at what was then called Lincoln Bible Institute, and he created a flight program at Lincoln Bible Institute mm -hmm. to teach the young uh, uh, preachers how to fly so that they went on mission trips to Africa or Asia so they could get around. There are no roads there. Uh, so he started a flying program at the uh, Logan County Airport um, in conjunction with Lincoln Bible Institute. You know, you mentioned Beeson pilots, so B. Gilbaugh, famous test pilot, but it has Beeson roots. Yeah. And uh, uh, I recall one time at the Lincoln Theater, RKO Pathé News came on, and I can see this in my mind's eye now, and B. Gilbaugh, famous American test pilot, is going to show how they start in the old days, they used to spin the prop to get the inertia mm -hmm. starter, and they came up with what was called a shotgun starter, mm -hmm. and they put that in there and fire that shell off, and then it would kick the prop around and, and give it enough spin to go. <laughs> and Lee Gelba was in, in, in on that uh, development. So, uh, Mrs. Uh, Wachtel, uh how many members will show up? Let's, let's talk about the Heritage in Flight, and, and maybe somebody would like to come and sit in on a meeting and find out what's going on out there. They're more than welcome to do that, yes. We usually have, what, about 20 people show up for the meetings. Uh, anybody is welcome if they want to listen to the general um, meeting, and then if it goes into a board meeting, then, of course, that wouldn't be allowed. But uh, I invite everybody. Uh, there's a couple ways you can show up. At, and by the way, I want to mention, we do school tours or we do group tours. Um, we are volunteer driven. There's not somebody there every single day. We need more um, volunteers to, <coughs> excuse us, excuse me, <coughs> to join us. But to, to, in order to open the doors more often, we need the, the manpower to do that. We have a phone number on the door and we also have it on the website and of course on the Facebook page. I want to encourage anybody who wants a tour even if it's just the family for the weekend or whatever, use that phone number. It is tied to three people, including myself. It'll trigger that voicemail, and we'll uh, we'll get back to you immediately, or pretty immediately. We won't leave it days later. It's not an old-fashioned answering machine sitting on the desk, and only on Saturday somebody <laughs> checks it. It's electronic, so uh, we do encourage that. But, uh, yeah, anybody who wants to find out more about the Heritage in Flight, we do have brochures. I'll leave one here. Uh, you're welcome to have us mail it to them or uh, come by on and pick one up. And I'll be working with tourism. I'm going to see them later today, too, to uh, get back and involved with them. I used to be on the tourism board, but it's been a while. Um, but we, my job is to, I want to stir up more interest and awareness of heritage and flight in not only Lincoln, but the area, Atlanta, b -Sun. I don't want to specify or, or dwell on age as a, as a membership, but a lot of us old people are sitting around not much to do except scratch our ears. Uh, uh, that would make, might make a nice something for somebody to do to occupy some of their time. Yes. And of course we need younger people. All day long. That That's important. So uh, uh, how would uh, how would I go about, uh, besides my calling you, how somebody who's interested in, in membership in the Heritage Gym Flight, how would they go about that? Use that telephone number. Leave a message, a voice message. We will get it. It'll be come. It'll come through. It'll actually. It's tied to my cell phone. I can see that the call is coming through. It's a electronic. Uh, it's a Google pro program, I think. Mm -hmm. The voice. Google voice. And uh, leave a voicemail. Give me your phone number and your name. I'll get right back to you. Or if somebody else catches that phone call, uh, they will do the same thing, and we will get that information for you. We can send you a brochure. We can direct you to the website. But, and if you would, again, it's we just need to know what we need to do to help you become involved. We really do need the volunteers. I would like to see at least one morning or four hour shift during the week, especially with summer, somebody bound, minding the shop basically, taking people to a, uh, the tour of the facility and the hangar. And we have static airplanes outside where. Um, people can go look at those too. Those are owned by the government, but they're free to take a look at them also. But uh, I would like to get to that point where I can get some volunteers willing to work maybe four hours, not work, it's really fun. I used to do it when I first got here, 
um, just be, have the door open and people know that they can bring the kids in the summertime. So if people are listening now and they are interested, do you have that phone number they can call? I do. Let me find my, I hid my brochure here. I haven't memorized it yet. Okay, the phone number for that, great question, is 217-953-4118. And that's how you get hold of Heritage and Flight. Again, it'll trigger somebody to respond to the request, and we will get back to you pretty quickly. I know any who sold quilts got invited and, 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 and interested in, in. Well, I know how you got interested because Tom Walker was interested in it, and that's how you got interested in. Oh, at the history at the at, at the museum. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, he wanted me to be busy, which is good. <laughs> it's to me, it's a gem. You know, I first got here. You know, I, I we had enough members that. You know, we had it open, uh, I think it was Thursday, I'd be there all day. And we didn't get a lot of feedback. People didn't always come. I want to get that, I want to change that. And I'm going to be more active on the Facebook pages and, um, and send out things. But um, you also mentioned the website. Do you have that website address? In Absolutely. www.heritageinflight.org. Heritage and Flight will be just run together. It's not mm -hmm. the cutie little things between it. Okay. Uh, www.heritageandflight.org. And with .org, of course, we mentioned before, you're a nonprofit organization. So if folks are looking for some place to maybe donate or, or uh, contribute, contribute. Again, that certainly would be most welcome, I'm guessing. Is there anything in particular you're in need of any anything other than maybe volunteers or? or well, <laughs> as every. Uh, Nonprofits, the donations keep the doors open. If you want to bequeath something in you know the future when you pass, if you want to donate once in a while, that's great. We've got a donation box in there. Um, become a member and become more active. I mean, uh, it's what makes it work. But it is a treasure, and I've always promoted it, and I've always liked Heritage and Flight, and. Um, I promote it to the locals. I am a president. A president. I've been president for other organizations, but uh, people really, like you mentioned earlier, Bill, that some people don't understand what's going on at the airport if they don't have an airplane. Yeah. Some didn't know there was a museum over there that's been open mm -hmm. for a long time. So, yeah, we want time, talent, and treasure. <laughs> Which is like church. <laughs> but it is fun, and we're not going to put you on a 40-hour schedule or anything, but I would like to see more of the kids when they need something to do during the um, summers when they're off of school to work, not work, show up and help tour. And it's not a hard tour. Just walk people through the museum and then let them go ahead and look at the displays. I think that would be worth some community uh, you know, families may have an old World War II veteran in their family who's going to go make it his maker, and uh, they may not know what to do as far as memorials is concerned. True. That would make a nice memorial. Absolutely. And That's so I hope, as I approach Don Peasley, I hope some of you will remember that. <laughs> <laughs> It's neat because when the kids start reading the labels and they say, oh, that's great-grandpa or somebody, or, again, I go back to that typewriter thing, that they, they don't see these things everywhere. And, and it's nice that there's a lot of long-term uh, residents, I mean, a couple hundred, uh, you know, a couple decades, more than decades, but people who grew up here and their ancestors grew up here. And, mm -hmm. and it's really, you need to pass that information to these kids and let them know that grandpa gave us that or maybe dad or whoever. So. Before we close, Chris, I want to get back to uh, uh, pilot training. Uh, how many hours is it, would it take a student to get his uh, license? Well, the the rules that the FAA set up say that a person needs a minimum of 40 hours of uh, training and uh, flight experience. That it, That's a very short time, given the amount of information that a person needs to learn so it would be much more than that but 40 hours is the absolute minimum uh, that that uh, that a person would need uh, and that's broken up into all sorts of different tasks like uh, dual instruction with a flight instructor solo flying by yourself flying cross-country from here to there uh, flying at night is a requirement, uh, 
taking some instrument training where you can't see outside the airplane. You have to depend just on the instruments to fly the airplane. So it's a very complicated but immensely fun uh, experience to learn how to fly. And it could lead to a career. We need pilots. Desperately need pilots. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah, I hear that, that some of our major carriers are having a pilot shortage problem, and yeah. I find that hard to believe. In a lot of retirements too. Yeah, we yeah. need them. You want to go somewhere? We need pilots. Stacy Wachtel, president of Heritage in Flight, and Curtis Fox, a uh, uh, well-recognized pilot. And by the way, I've known this kid since he was wet behind his ears. <laughs> His father, God love him, was Dr. W.W. W. Fox, who ran the Lincoln State School way back, and his mother, Emily, was a registered nurse. So he's got good stock. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for being with us this morning. Thank, Thank you, you for the viewpoint. The preceding program is a presentation of WLCN 96.3 FM and WLCNonline.com.